Hello everyone, it is Sierra here, and in today's video, we are gonna talk about breaking down the basics of a skincare routine. One of the main questions I always get in the treatment room is, what should I be using? My friends use a toner, should I be using a toner? Do I need to be using an eye cream? Do I need a serum? All of these things are questions that a lot of people have, and in today's video, I'm gonna cover those topics. So if you wanna know more, then keep watching. Alrighty guys, so the first part I want to get into is the first part of your skincare routine, which is the cleansing process. So I've talked a little bit about cleansers before. Um, I always tell people that when it comes to cleansers, you want to choose what is best for your skin type and your concerns. Yes, you want to make sure that you're using a cleanser that's low foam or no foam because it will definitely help make that process easier. Um, you want to make sure that whatever you're using to cleanse your face is not, you know, everybody wants that squeaky clean feeling and that's not what you should um, go for. So questions to ask yourself when you have, you know, your cleanser is, does your cleanser, after you use your cleanser, does your skin feel like super tight? Like to <laughs> like to make expressions, does it feel uncomfortable? Or after you cleanse, does your skin feel pretty, you know, okay? Like it's it just feels like it's clean, but not completely like tight or itchy. Those are things that you should definitely ask yourself after you cleanse. So um, instead of going into age groups, I'll just break it down this way. If you are more acneic and you do find that you do need something that's a little bit heavier in salicylic acid, benzoyl peroxides, I would recommend not using that cleanser every day or use something a little more hydrating in the morning and then using the more active cleanser at night. So you're not just drying your skin out. You're giving your skin a little bit of a break. And to be completely honest, you're going to get more um, out of that cleanser by using it at night because when your skin is turning over, you have those active ingredients, your skin is in repair mode. So you're really going to see more of a difference in the nighttime. So I would say any active ingredients, acne, use those more in the nighttime because even during the day, if you're going to be out in the sun, that could be a little aggressive for your skin. So using that at night, I suggest would be the best, uh, you know, the best way to go about it. Now, for all of the uh, all of my people who are more on the dry side, um, you definitely want to try products such as cleansing oils, cleansing balms, um, all those types of things that are good with uh, moisture that are very that have a lot of vitamins, stem cells. Those are things that you want to be using. And if you are more on the dry side, no foam. Like I said. I wouldn't even try low, I just try no foam to really help, um, you know, hydrate and balance your skin. That is super, super important. Really cleansing sets the tone for how the rest of your routine is going to work and how effective it's going to be. Um, cleansing is so important. There are a lot of people who believe and who are spreading education that you don't need to cleanse your skin at all. I wouldn't say that. I would say you definitely need to cleanse at night because you're out in the environment. And then in the morning, of course, you may just need to refresh. Now, when I say refresh, that's still a cleanse, but you may be able to do a lighter option. So maybe just a cleansing oil or a cleansing balm or like a jelly cleanser. Those may be more of an AM cleansing if you're more on the drier side. Or even if you're oily, just use something that's a little bit lighter, but just to cleanse the oils off from the night before. But you definitely need to cleanse AM and PM, and especially PM if you've worn makeup, if you've exercised, sweat, all of those things need to come off. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much my general rule for cleansing. That's what I recommend to do and to make sure that your cleansing can be effective. If you don't know what your skin type is, this was is where an esthetician would come in. You need to go see an esthetician, get a facial. They can tell you your skin type so that way you can pick products 
that are going to be uh, geared around your skin type. So yeah, definitely consider that. But that's just kind of like my basic rules and just some tips and suggestions on cleansing. All right, so for my step two or the next step usually is toning. Toning is one of those things that everybody doesn't have to do it and it's not for everyone. You don't have to do it every day. I'm a bit more on the oily side. So just using myself as an example, I do tone because usually I find that my skin needs it. Um, now I am a bit more selective on the toners that I use. Like a lot of the toners that I use or exfoliating toners have salicylic acid, glycolic acid, lactic acid, things that are going to help with cell buildup and assist with cell turnover. So they're more on the lines of a liquid exfoliator basis versus just a regular, you know, witch hazel toner. You know, that's more of what I'm looking for, especially because I'm past the point of 25 and I still get breakouts. So I use more of an acid toner versus just regular witch hazel. Now, if you're more acne prone, you can choose to do more of an acid toner like the ones I've described prior, or you can do just a regular witch hazel toner if you don't want to do anything, you know, too abrasive. That's completely fine. But um, a lot of times I have found that, you know, when you have more of a cell buildup, even with more mature ladies that are drier, using like liquid exfoliators with those acids that I mentioned can definitely help with the cell turnover. Now, another thing is I don't tone every day um, or, you know, in the morning and at night. Sometimes I'll do it just at night and then you know, things like that. So just things to keep into consideration that when it comes to the AM and the PM, you know, or throughout the day, it doesn't have to be every day. You can do it just in the mornings or just at night, whatever you feel your skin is kind of telling you. And that's a really important thing to listen to your skin, you know, when it talks to you. I know in the past I've used exfoliating toners and I know one time I used it every single day and my skin was like, no, I've never dealt with redness before and I had like red cheeks. So I was like, I think I need to maybe scale this back. So you can always start small and then work your way up. So one day, two days, oh, I need to go back to one day, but listen to your skin. You don't want to overdo it. But toners, like I said, it depends on your skin type and your concerns. Um, sometimes if you're more on the dry side, you may like a little refreshing toner, like a rose water spray or a toner that maybe has hyaluronic acid and you mist yourself. So things like that can be very um, hydrating. You can even mix and match. So like in the morning, you can do a toner maybe that has hyaluronic acid in it. And then at night, you can do an exfoliating toner or an exfoliating liquid that will help remove the dead skin cells. Now, depending on the percentage of your different um, acids, if you choose an exfoliating toner, you may not have to exfoliate. So you may not need... Uh, an exfoliating cleanser or anything like that. That may be enough exfoliation for you. But I would I like to just use it as a disclaimer. You don't want to um you know, you don't don't look at it as a replacement for the other. You know, make sure you do your research before you decide like I'm going to do this versus this, okay? So that's really just the general rule about toners. Not everybody needs one. Not everybody has to have one. But if you do feel like you need one, do the research about what is in it. Is it going to help your concerns that you have about your skin and so on? Okay. All right. So let's take a look into our next topic. All right. So for the next part, this is usually the exfoliating part. So generally when we cleanse, we tone. We, this may be an exfoliating day. So when it comes to exfoliation, my general rule of thumb is that you want to do it on average two to three times a week. I have found that when it comes to people, 
they're either doing it way too much or they're either doing it, it's either way too much or they're not doing it enough. So you really have to make sure that you're staying on top of it because as we age, the window of our cell turnover period will drastically slow down. So in school, we learned the time it takes for your skin cells to turn over is usually three to four weeks. That's the cycle, right? But as we age, that window gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And what we have to do is we have to make sure we're helping it along. And that's where exfoliators come in. Now, there are many different types of exfoliators. Um, you've got scrubs, you've got uh, liquid exfoliators, like I mentioned earlier, um, salicylic acids, you have enzymes, you have enzymes that also incorporate um, acids. So there's a lot to choose from. Some of the popular ones that I've like that I like and remember are um, the Aha Vaha by Murad, the AHA, the BHA exfoliator with um, the the little the little beads in it. I found that very nice and gentle and just super effective because you're getting a chemical as well as a physical. So the beads you have to manipulate to do the work, whereas with, and it has the acids in it that also assist in your exfoliating process. So those are things to really, you know, consider. Uh, like I said, two to three times a week. Depending where you are in the season, you may have to do a little more. Maybe you can get away with less. So I know a lot of times for me, myself as an oily person, I feel like my skin needs help more in the summertime. Like I have more of a buildup. So I try to stay on top of exfoliating around the summertime. Sometimes for drier skin types, it's the winter time. You know, they feel like they really get that flaky skin. So that's when they have to, you know, do it. Or it could be flip up. It just really depends on you as a person. And also, if you have anything going on hormonally or any health conditions that can, you know, cause you to produce a lot of, uh, you know, increase your turnover, you may have to help, you know, get rid of the dead skin cells. Sometimes medicines can do that. So just things to keep in mind of why you may need to exfoliate. But the main purpose of it is to help with the cell turnover. So just things to keep in mind. Like I said, uh, just to hit the points again, you have physical exfoliators, which are scrubs. I will say with those, you have to be very selective and careful on what you use. All scrubs are not bad, but they can, depending on what you use, they can cause micro tears in the skin. And just to go ahead and check this off of everybody's list as a do not buy, the St. Ives facial scrub, that's not one you should buy at all. I know plenty of people who have used that and they ended up with skin sensitivity because of it, redness, cap, broken capillaries, um, all of that. Like, don't use that. There's so much out there that's better. And don't be afraid, like I said, to investigate what works for you. You may be more sensitive and you can only use an enzyme because you can't handle the rubbing. But like I said, when you see an esthetician, they're going to let you know what will be best for your skin. So, you know, if you've never gotten a facial, go ahead and try one. You know, that way you can sit down with the professional and they can at least let you know what you need. Okay? So, yeah, that's it for exfoliation. So, the next step in your skincare routine is going to be moisturizer. So, you're pretty much in the AM, you're going to do... The SPF, you never want to do SPF at night um, because it's a block. It's there to protect. And at night, your skin is in repair mode. You don't want to block, you know, at nighttime. So you don't need to use SPF at night. And that can also lead to breakouts if you do at night. So when it comes to moisturizer, you know, that is, of course, once again, a not a one size fits all. Are you oily? Are you dry? Are you combination? You know, you want to make sure you're picking a moisturizer for your skin type. You want to make sure that you are using things that like for me, just to use as an example, I cannot use things that are super, super heavy. 
during the summer. Now, now that it's cooler, we're heading in the, you know, we're in fall, winter, I can use things that are a bit richer and it's not going to break me out. Really right now, my skin is at its best. My skin is not super oily. It's producing, the oil that it's producing is comfortable. I'm not getting a lot of breakouts. So my skin is like in heaven right now. And now that I'm older, I'm also not producing a lot of oil. So believe it or not, sometimes I can experience a little bit of dryness now that, you know, it's winter time. So I do tend to use more creams versus, you know, in the summer, I use more like a gel, you know, things that aren't too heavy. So you do have to transition for certain things. And even if you're more dry, you may go from a cream to using a balm. It just really depends. But in general, that's what you want to consider. You know, what do you need to bump it up or is it okay where it's at? So the steps that I've mentioned in the video so far are cleansing, toning, exfoliating, and moisturizer. Now, skincare routines, depending on your needs, depending on what you're looking for, you can definitely add more to them. So if you wanna bring in a serum, if you wanna add an eye cream, if you want a mask, those are things you can add to your routine throughout. Um, another thing I wanna talk about is devices. So this is a device that I recently purchased not too long ago. This is from Vitality Planet. This is one of their new devices. This device is really cool because this does not use uh, brushes. This uses, it uses a, a silicone um head but it you can replace it you know you can remove it and it's different heads like there's one that's a massage head that I just all I do is I just pop it on and then I go about uh cleansing I like the silicone because it's more hygienic it's less abrasive and one thing I often tell people when they're using things like this or if you have a Clarisonic do not add pressure you don't want to uh, it could, it's too abrasive. So what you want to do is you want to put the device and move the device where you want it to go, but don't add pressure because you can hurt your skin that way. Now, what I like about the these new, um, they're not new to the market, but the more science we get, the better the devices get. This is a LED uh, red light therapy device. So you can um, use this. And if you don't know what red light is for, red light is good to build collagen. It's good to, it's healing, uh, builds collagen. Um, it's very anti-aging. So all the things that I'm concerned about. Another great device is the stem light device. I have that one as well. I use that more in treatment room. Um, it's a per I use the purple light, the mix of the red and the blue for acne and healing as well. But it's nothing wrong with these devices. That's another big question that I get. Like, are these okay? Can I use my Clarisonic? Can I use this? Of course you can. But all things, of course, in moderation. And also, too, I tell people, especially with the Clar Clarisonic, if they have the, br the brushes, you know, you don't have to use it in the morning and night. Sometimes pick a time where you want to use it. You know, I, I'm a big fan of doing more at night so I always say if you're gonna do it do it at night time but you know just be careful because these brushes can make your skin a little sensitive like I said I like the Vitality Planet because it is the silicone brushes that they're using and like I said you get different heads to you know one is like more for massaging now on their website I've I think they've shown people apply product to get the most out of it, I wouldn't recommend it. Um, one thing I will say is that they say that this device, the LED, the light is FDA approved, which is important. It's nice to have, you know, a backing to feel like, you know, is this light going to do anything? Is this, you know, what is, what kind of light is this? But it is FDA backed. So it made me feel better about purchasing it. And I like to purchase things like this just so I can, you know, when people tell me they're using it, they're, I'm like, I'm able to, you know, relate to my clients and give my experience or gear them down the right direction of a good device for them. I've had a Clarisonic. Like I said, these are Vitality. 
Um, Clarisonic is out of business for the most part, but if they still have their brush, I can kind of help navigate them and tell them what to do. Another important thing I want to say is do what works for you. I am a firm believer as an esthetician, as a professional, I am never going to recommend things to people that I know they're not going to do. If you are someone who when I get people on the treatment table and they say to me, all I use is a cleanser and a moisturizer. And they're telling me that in terms of their cleanser, they're using like <laughs> Lever 2000 and their moisturizer, they're using whatever they use on their body. Um, so what my goal is when I hear that, that lets me know is A, the person is low maintenance and they don't want a bunch of things. So when I tell them my recommendations, I keep those things in mind. I say, hey, I'm only going to use three products. I'm not going to recommend tons and tons of products because I know they'll never use them. Now, I'm also realistic with my clients. If they only want to use, you know, three products, but they have a long list of concerns, we're going to have to adjust and find a medium. But I say those things to say is that when you're picking out products, especially when you start to see a professional, it's very easy to feel overwhelmed or feel obligated to have to buy hundreds of things. So don't be afraid to tell your esthetician or talk to the person and be your own advocate. So tell your esthetician like, I think it's awesome that, you know, you're helping me suggest these, you know, six products or whatever, but I'm going to be honest with you. I'm only going to use, you know, a couple of them just because, and be honest, say, you know, I don't have the time or blah, 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 and say, can you tell me what are the top three you would suggest, you know, and we'll go from there. Yeah, that's reasonable. You know, and like I said, I've never been one to you to recommend a ton of products, especially when I know my client is not showing me that they're going to use all of them. Now, I've had people come in and say, I'm very familiar with the skincare routine. I have one. I'm just really looking to replace what I have or I'm looking to bump up my routine. And if they tell me, okay, so my routine is typically a I use a cleanser, a toner, a moisturizer, a serum, an eye cream, a day cream. A you know, if they're telling me all that, then I know I can lay out six things and trust that that person's going to do all of that. So, you know, just be honest with yourself and be honest with the professional that's trying to help you. If they recommend a mask, you're like, I'm not going to do that. Let them know, like, I'm not probably not going to do that because don't waste your money. You know, if you're going to spend it, spend it on what you're going to use. So just some tips. I hope you found this video helpful. If you guys have any questions on skincare or you want to see me do another video about a skincare routine um, or talk about specific ingredients like retinol, vitamin C, squalene, hydroquinone, all these different things, kojic acid, I will be more than happy to do that. Um, just give me a like and, you know, write in a comment. Um, I feel like the, the basics of what I've covered can apply to all, um, ages and different things. If there's anything specific that you want me to cover, I will. Um, I think the next video I'm going to talk about is menopause, how to deal with your skin during menopause and other things that typically happen to women around that time. Um, just to kind of help because that's another issue that a lot of, uh, women deal with. And I get a lot of questions, you know, some women have had hysterectomies and they're like, my skin is crazy. I don't know what to do. So I want to do more research about that just to make sure when I talk to you guys, I have everything I need, but I'm pretty sure that's probably going to be one of the next things that I talk about. Um, I want to do another video with a model doing another facial video it's just i've been crazy busy and um to do that i really gotta work some things out um it could be a bit difficult but like i said i'm gonna check that out and get back to you guys so thank you guys so much for watching if you are sticking with me i appreciate you so so much if you like this video please like comment subscribe 
please hit the notification bell. I have to say this, something weird is going on with the comments. I'm really trying to, you know, get that together. Um, people have left me comments and I can't answer, I can't answer them. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I need help. <laughs> I'm gonna try to figure it out, but yeah, I, I don't know what's going on. Um, but yeah, so please bear with me. Follow me and I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>